I was unsure if an East character would ever appear in this series of character analysis videos. It's kind of hard to have amazingly written protagonists when, for all but one of your games, the main character is a mostly silent protagonist. However, now that Falcom decided to give at least East 8 dual protagonists, the chance became real and they took the opportunity to make an excellent character and ran with it. Donna Eclusia is the best written character in the East series, and in this video, I will tell you exactly why she is such a great character. Now, those of you who have been watching my content for a little while may remember that I put this series on hiatus because I wanted to figure out a new format for the videos. This video is the debut of that adjusted format, so please let me know your thoughts on it, and I hope you enjoy it. Starting out, the main question to ask is, who is Donna Eclusia? Donna Eclusia is the Maiden of the Great Tree, a spiritual role among the Eternian race and leader of the faith that works with the current Eternian ruler to help the people. Donna also has precognitive abilities that come in different flavors, standard visions that Donna can change, hopefully for the better, and scarlet visions, which are inevitable. She is the lone survivor of the Eternian race by the time the party meets her in Adol's time because she has been made effectively immortal as one of the Wardens of Evolution. Despite this, she joins Adol in fighting against the destruction of humans and seeks to stop the lacrimosa that caused the extinction of her people from also destroying humanity. Personality-wise, Donna is determined, caring, humble, impulsive, and balances both great maturity in order to conduct herself in a manner becoming of her position, and childishness in the few moments she's allowed to let loose a little. All of these traits, and I'm not kidding when I say all, come into focus in her story and are the reason that she is able to accomplish what no other being has ever managed to do with regards to the Lacrimosa. That's a brief summary of who Donna Eclusia is without going into much detail, but traits alone do not make a great character. Therefore, now I shall go through Donna's journey and highlight how she became the hero that saved the human race alongside Adol. I will touch on how her backstory made her the woman she became, how her personality and drive informs the important decisions she makes along the way, and how Falcom's writing team intertwined her character growth into the story to deliver us a satisfying character arc from beginning to end. Despite us seeing a lot of how Donna became the Maiden of the Great Tree, there is very little we know about Donna as a child apart from one story, the story of the Ring and her mother. Growing up, Donna already had precognitive powers. This allowed her to see people's futures, both good and bad, which immediately set her apart from other people. Imagine the feeling you have when you have to tell someone bad news, and then imagine having that feeling with every person you ever encounter, but you can't actually tell them. Donna's gift caused her to become withdrawn and depressed, until her mother got her a ring that would suppress her powers. In this moment, Donna's mother says a poignant line, but you're such a caring child that I know how hard it will be for you to look away. So Donna's mother gives Donna the ability to live like a normal child, which directly leads to her mother's death because Donna couldn't foresee it happening. The most important part of this moment is what comes next. Our decisions and actions make us who we are and Donna makes a crucial choice in this moment. She vowed to prevent as much suffering and sadness as she could to never again turn a blind eye to it. She also decided to become a candidate to be the next Maiden of the Great Tree. Even as a child, Donna shows some defining traits, her caring soul wishing to prevent suffering, her strength to face challenges head on, and her sense of duty that her powers, blessing and curse should be used to help. Donna decided to honor her mother's legacy by taking on the responsibility her powers granted her, and she would continue doing this throughout the entire game. After her decision and departure, we have several more memories that reinforce Donna's drive, impulsiveness, and kindness. The first couple memories establish her visions and foreshadow her eventual role. The most important memory in this collection, though, is of Donna with Olga and Sarai. Despite her important decision, Donna can't completely ignore her nature with her curiosity, conducting research, her impulsiveness, skipping out on the ceremony, and finally her kindness, rescuing the baby bird. She establishes a reputation as a troublemaker, but it is this headstrong attitude that will serve her best in the coming events. This scene also serves to set up how Olga and Sarai will relate to Donna moving forward, balancing out Donna with maturity and pragmatism. Olga ends the scene with a prescient quote, If Donna thinks someone or something is in trouble, 
She'll risk life and limb to save it. Donna continues to fulfill her vow she made before, never to turn a blind eye to suffering, and soon she gets the opportunity to put that philosophy into action. In the fourth memory, Donna takes action using her visions. She foresaw a forest fire and leads Olga and Sarai to where they needed to be. This is the first of several instances showing that when danger hits, it is Donna who steps up and takes action and control, showcasing her future leadership skills. She knew what needed to be done to stop the fire threatening the temple, and she did not hesitate to do so, utilizing the knowledge she no doubt gathered during her unsupervised exploration of the surrounding area. However, with Donna's brave but impulsive action, there are of course consequences, including the destruction of a sanctuary. But as the previous maiden pointed out, Donna's actions prevented the temple and great tree from being put in serious danger. Given a tough choice between disobeying orders and potentially saving the temple and great tree, or obeying the rules and perhaps preserving the sanctuary, it's not that Donna made the right or wrong choice. It's that she made a choice and stuck to it. This is the first of many extremely tough choices Donna has to make, and she showed in this moment an indomitable spirit in the face of crisis. As Olga says once Donna is chosen as the next maiden. With that incident, Donna proved that she is capable of taking bold, decisive action. Clearly this moment was when it was confirmed that Donna had the capacity to be a great leader, so long as she had some good advisors by her side. And that leadership is going to be necessary in the coming age for Eternia. How is Donna as a leader then? Well, we start to get some glimpses of that in the first section where Donna can be played before and during the Arboreal Awakening. Since this is also the player's first true sight of Donna's character, we also get her establishing character moment when Atla finally leaves and Donna says, All this formality is wearing me out. I should go walk around first. In this small conversation, Donna showed kindness in encouraging Atla to rest. She showed her curious and somewhat immature nature that would earn her the nickname the Wandering Maiden, and this moment shows that while formality does not come naturally to her, she is prepared to perform her duties with strength and conviction to the point of personal exhaustion. As Lady Urganata says, the Maiden of the Great Tree is a guiding beacon of all Eternia. Donna is still adjusting to this new role, but with this greater responsibility comes more chances to help others, and so Donna is prepared to be that guide for Eternia in order to fulfill her vow. She just needs the occasional reminder from Olga about how to conduct herself. The biggest moment though comes with the Arboreal Awakening itself, when Donna sees the peaceful island and moons get shrouded by storms. Donna though makes a decision to not tell anyone else about the vision, and the possible calamity it pretends. This is not the last time Donna will choose to shoulder this sort of burden by herself, and it is a habit she will need to break herself of if she is to succeed. The next short scene is mostly just a heartfelt goodbye between Sarai and Donna. However, at the end, Sarai tells Donna, no matter what happens in the future, always be true to yourself. She says this in response to Donna talking about Olga telling her to be more formal and Donna struggles to be better at her role. In order to accomplish all that she does, Donna needs to follow both Olga and Sarai's advice. She needs to be better in her role as the maiden while staying true to herself no matter what. It's not an easy task, but someone as determined and willful as Donna can certainly manage it. The next time we see her, Donna has begun to show more comfort in her leadership, both in making requests and inquiries to her handmaiden, and in asserting herself and her position with Olga. It's almost like she's maturing, while staying true to her wandering nature. This is also our first glimpse of how Donna interacts with people not associated with the royal family or faith. The people she interacts with are significant in their similarities to Donna. Mia and Sia share Donna's curiosity and some interests as seen by them talking about essence in books with her. Rastel has made a promise to become a great guard like his father, which makes his determination a great match for Donna. Finally, there's Consul Darius who doesn't call Donna his ally in relaxation for nothing. He is shown to be an important leader up until the very end, while balancing that by being a cheery, relaxed person about his position. He shows Donna how to be an effective leader while staying true to yourself. All of them have aspects that resonate with Donna and her personality, and she treats them with kindness, patience, and respect. It's not hard to see how she grows in the esteem of the people of Eternia.
Soon after this memory, though, comes another one in which Donna shows for the first time that she has dreamt of Adol the same way he has been dreaming of her. What does she immediately do with regards to this stranger who needs help? Well, this is Donna, so of course she sets out to help them while also trying to find out what happened to turn Eternia to the ruins of Adol's time. Before she gets there, though, we get another chance to see how Donna has grown into her role as maiden based on the respect and praise she is given by older Eternians like Advisor Urganata or the Chief Guard Dran. She seems to be converting even the doubters to her side as she helps usher in a new golden age for Eternia. When Donna reaches the spot she saw Adol in her dream, she gets a vision confirming that the ruins are of the Eternian capital, but it seems the color and thus inevitability of the vision is still in doubt. At least she was able to help Adol, though. However, the knowledge of the possible ruin of Eternia now weighs on Donna as a matter of when and not if. Donna takes on another burden to her ever-growing load. This is also the time when Donna begins to explore the Sanctuary Crypt at Eos prompting and begins to learn about Eternia's past, as if learning about its future wasn't enough. Donna learns via these monoliths about the Great Tree of Origin's true purpose and the lacrimosa that will be responsible for the destruction of Eternia. Being able to press on despite learning the true history is a testament to Donna's determination to fight not just for Eternia, but for all peoples subject to the whims of the lacrimosa. It is after this memory that Adol and his party find Donna and she joins their group, albeit without most of her memories. However, I'm tracking Donna's development chronologically story-wise, not game-wise, so I'll come back to Donna's joint adventure with Adol later. Revelations keep coming for past Donna though, starting with the revelation that she is with Adol now herself, which she surprisingly is able to take in stride. This part of her story mostly backs up what I've said before. Her kindness and hard work has made her beloved by the people and an inspiration, and her continued growth and power through help from the spirits increases the ways she can help everyone in need. She also continues to learn more about the past, foretelling Eternia's doom. Signs continue to appear, though, until the fated day arrives. Donna receives a scarlet vision of a falling object crashing into the capital. As before, Donna doesn't hesitate to do all she can to stop it. As Donna says, we can't just do nothing and wait for the inevitable to happen. However, the result remains the same despite their efforts. The end has begun. Donna has failed in her attempt to save them, like with her mother, and the undeserved guilt is overwhelming. At least that's how Donna feels about it, and that guilt will drive her forward as she is now marked as a warden of evolution, destined to see through the end and the extinction of her race. However, it is in this time of crisis, when everything is at its worst, that Donna will show just how remarkable a person she is. Despite the growing hopelessness of the people, Donna remains resolute in helping everyone she can. That includes sneaking into a forbidden sacred area in order to help Adol proceed, as well as assisting everyone suffering due to the effects of the falling star. As she tells Eo, nothing will change. No matter what difficulties await me in the future, I want to help those in need till the very end. Given the difficulties Donna will continue to endure, the fact that she sticks by this statement is beyond admirable. In this period, some of the people turn on Donna. Not everyone, but many of them. Donna begins witnessing the deaths of the people she tried to protect and endures the wrath of the grieving families. With Sarai having disappeared, Donna is the target of the anger of a scared people. And still, she does what is right even when she unfairly feels responsible for their pain. She promises to keep fighting, keep scraping for her people as their leader. It might not be enough for everyone, but it convinces some to stick by her side till the bitter end. This resolve also allows her to stand up to the Wardens of Evolution and fight to keep her people alive as long as possible. When that finally fails, Donna takes the steps necessary to ensure that she is around when Adol arrives on Seyrin for one more chance to stop the Lacrimosa's merciless cycle. Because there are still people Donna can save, so she will fight on in the next era to save humans, and the Wardens themselves. Donna's tragedy, the only remaining survivor of a race long gone. She had to watch her closest friends die, endured the blame of her dying people, and witnessed the ruins of what was once her home. That chain of events would break almost anyone. It did break the previous four wardens, but it doesn't break Donna. Which is why she was chosen as the final maiden. 
The brightest individuals of each era before her eventually succumbed to the inevitability of the lacrimosa cycle, but Donna has a vow to keep, and she presses on with continued hope. As she shows over and over, Donna never gives up. She rejects the notion that her actions are meaningless. She refuses to fall into regret and despair, and begins a new journey with Adol to stop the lacrimosa once and for all. Now, Donna's development in this section is not as dramatic as it is in the past. Donna's relationship with the members of the Castaway Village is far different from her time in Eternia. She is no longer the leader, no longer the one to bear the burden of every vision, every decision. Of course, as she continues to remember things and gets more visions, Donna begins to worry about dragging the rest of the party with her on a quest that may end in their deaths. She even tries to run away from the party when she receives the Scarlet Vision showing that she will not be able to stay with them. She ran away to spare you all the trouble. She has become so accustomed to handling everything herself. Donna needed a reminder that in the end, they are all in this together. This reminder allows Donna to make her next promise, to meet their farewell with a smile and remain true to herself. This is the final big development for Donna's character. Being able to accept help and understand that she doesn't have to go it alone. Be true to herself, a message said by Sarai upon her departure from the temple. Be true to yourself, the last message from Olga communicated many years apart. And now the promise Donna makes to herself. Donna fulfills that promise as she works with the party to foil the lacrimosa and manages to achieve the other part of the promise in the golden ending when she meets back up with the party. After Donna becomes the goddess of evolution, now responsible for the cycle of selection and rejection, as if she hadn't had enough responsibility thrust on her before now, but as always, Donna steps up to take on any challenge she faces, a heroic action as always. She does thankfully take the lesson from Castaway Village to heart though, and accepts help from the previous wardens in her efforts as a new goddess. Then. Donna accomplishes her last promise by seeing the whole party off with a smile. Donna Eclusia is a bold, to the point of recklessness, determined woman. She never gave up despite all the burdens she carried and all the guilt that was placed on her by others and by herself. She struggled through the loss of everyone and everything she cared about and kept going. Resolute in the face of the odds of the forces stacked against her, Donna fought every step, never gave up, and in the end accomplished what no other person did or could do before. While Adol fought as well against the Lacrimosa, it was Donna's actions that gave Adol the chance to save humanity. The brightest souls of every single race before Donna were chosen as wardens, and yet it is Donna who burns the brightest out of all of them. Donna wasn't just the perfect choice for the final maiden. She was the perfect choice for the final warden, and likely the perfect choice for the goddess of evolution. She grew from the little girl who was overwhelmed by her gift to a woman determined to use her gift to save as many people as she could. She managed to save the world and kept her promises by being true to herself. If that is not an inspiration, I don't know what is. And we were told that would be Donna's strength from the very beginning by Adol in his journal. When Donna's time came to answer the call of destiny, she rose to the occasion and she saved the world by being the caring, brave, and determined Donna we grew to know over the course of the story. Her journey is remarkable from beginning to end, and I'm so glad Falcom wrote it and to the people who brought Donna to life, from the artists to her voice actors. For this next section, I will talk about Donna's character foils. While there are two of them, I will remark first that Falcom actually didn't rely much on character foils highlighting Donna's character. This is highly unusual in any story and makes it even more special that Donna ended up as such a great character. Donna was such a bright character that she can stand on her own and it is evident who she is and what her goals are. Donna's two character foils, minor though they may be, are Olga and Ura, otherwise known as Sarai. No, Adol doesn't count as a foil. It's very hard to have a foil be a silent protagonist. Olga was the favorite to be the next maiden. Responsible, careful, and proper. It is easy to see why that assumption was made, but it was Donna who was chosen, which begs the question, why? Olga answered it herself. Donna was capable of bold, decisive leadership in the face of a crisis. Olga is shown to be more careful and prudent. 
prudency has its place, but for the time that Eternia would be going through, it was Donna who was most capable of stepping up to tackle the problems of the day. Other than that, the biggest effect Olga has on Donna's character arc is being the voice of reason, both in admonishing Donna's occasional childishness, but also in remarking on her progress and reinforcing her choices. The second foil is Ura or Sarai. Like Donna, Ura is a warden. Like Donna, Ura is a warden that inserted herself into the lives of the people that came after her species' extinction. Unlike Donna, though, Ura did not seek to stop the Lacrimosa. Much like Olga, Ura was the prudent one, beaten down by the despair of her loss, she lacked the resolve of Donna. The willfulness that propelled Donna past obstacles previously deemed to be impossible to overcome. Ura could have taken Donna's role in the story for herself if she had continued to refuse to accept the Lacrimosa as inevitable. As with the other Wardens, though, Ura gave in to the cycle, which just goes to show how special Donna is that she pushed through the events that broke everyone prior to her, and broke the cycle. Finally, I've talked all about Donna's arc and how she grew into the woman that achieved the impossible, prepared to pay any price to prevent the suffering that she and her people went through. A great character, though, needs to resonate with the audience, and not every great character will do that, no matter how amazing they are. Why, then, did Donna resonate with me, specifically, then? Donna resonated with me because she is very different from me. In the character foils example, I talked about Olga being the prudent one, the mature one, and that's the role I've usually occupied in my life. I am careful. No one would ever call me bold or impulsive. To then see a character who in a lot of ways is the opposite of who I am go through all these struggles and emerge out the other side triumphant makes me inspired to look at myself more critically. Donna was able to save the world because she stayed true to herself. I'm never going to be a bold person, but perhaps by being true to myself, I can use my strengths to accomplish what others think is impossible. I also was inspired in the few ways that Donna resembles me as I strive to be kind and understanding to all those I meet. It is just fiction, but the fact that Donna's story made me consider these things for my own life I think shows just how impactful a character she can be. I imagine there are many of you out there who feel similarly to me about this, and I hope Donna helps inspire you to stay true to yourself as we move through our own challenges. Thank you for joining me on this long ride. I'm really glad I got the chance to make this video, because as soon as I finished E8, I knew I wanted to talk about how wonderful Donna is as a character. I truly appreciate you taking the time to watch through this video, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leaving a like is the best way for more people to find this video and my channel beyond my subscribers and usual viewers. Comments also help with that, and I'm eager to hear your thoughts on Donna, the new video format, or E8 in general. If you are not already subscribed, please hit that button and ring the bell to get notifications for whenever I post. It may be a little while before another character analysis video comes, but if people enjoy this one, I'll know to keep going with them. Be true to yourselves out there, and I hope you have a great day, and happy gaming.